Right. And Capitol Records, you know, and even today, they're pretty good about getting that album, <laughs> getting them band signed, and pushing the album, pushing the sales. Sure. And, you know, that's what Capitol did with you guys as well, right? Yeah, Capitol did a good, you know, we were kind of like the redheaded stepchild of Capitol, you know, because the people that signed us there, the thing that happens in, in, in any corporate life, unfortunately, and so no different in the record business, you know, is that someone had fell in love with us, loved Megadeth, signed us, brought us in, really stood behind us, and then he either left or got fired or moved on to a new job. Yeah. So all of a sudden, now we're there without our point guy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we always sold enough records, we were always successful enough on our own, doing things our own way. So to some degree, we kind of got left alone, that people weren't trying to formulate us and do things with us, which was nice, quite honestly. But at the same time, it's kind of hard in these big companies when you don't have someone inside championing that. And that's, you know, to the advantage of maybe some of your younger viewers here is that, you know, in this day and age, again, you can record things for a lot less money. You can do things much more independently. Right. Now, the downside of that is you may have a harder time making a living doing it, too. You know, yeah. you know, as much as everybody says the record companies are big, bad, and evil, they also mm -hmm. became a way for us to make a living, you know, right. so that we could just only play music full time, which is, is, is a great life if you can do it. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, the good news is people can get in the game, make records, record go out and play gigs and do things and kind of live the dream a little yeah. bit, but they may also have to have a day job while they do that. You exactly. Know? Cool. Working at In-N-Out Burger and then playing music yeah, on the well, side and then having eat. another job. If you work at In-N-Out Burger, at least you get to eat. You're not a starving <laughs> musician. Good old West Coast. There yeah. you go. So it's 2010. Mm -hmm. You're touring with Slayer and Testament. Right. And back when you guys first started, you know, what was the first tour like? Was it like this, having fun? Having no. Uh, well, they were people? always fun, but they certainly weren't like this. I mean, we didn't play those kind of places, yeah. you know. So, the, I mean, the very first one... You know, they were, uh, you know, clubs and very tiny places. I mean, we've been coming here to this area for a long time. I mean, really, the band, we formed in L.A. Our first shows were in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't get to Sacramento for, you know, a few, quite a few years after that, I guess. You know, but back in the, say, the, you know, kind of late 80s, we started coming here playing little clubs and things. Right. And, and um, But we've done a lot. You know, it's interesting because us and Slayer have really grown up side by side in in the scene you know and so we've done shows with them as far back as i think 1985 we first played at lemoor in, in new york and um and so we've then we did the clash of the titan stuff back in 1990 and 91 and you know then there was some um Canadian Carnage stuff last year, and now American Carnage this year, and you know, and on and on right. it goes. Yeah. And the big four shows. So we've done a lot of stuff together. You know, our fans get it's a it's a good it's a good bill. You know, having us together because it's like all the fans come out at once, which makes for you know, no yeah. one wants to go to the party where no one's at. Right. You always want to go to the party yeah. where everyone's at, and this is the party where everyone's. Why at. not? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Now you guys toured all over the world. I mean. A great opportunity for you guys and what are some of your favorite places that you got to play um you know argentina's been fantastic for megadeth one of the just one of the coolest countries we went down there in 1994 on the euthanasia tour and it was just it was like beatlemania you know off the hook yeah. and um and then we just recently on this tour went to costa rica which i've never been to and it's beautiful oh, it's, very very uh, cool played in yeah. the jungle <laughs> no, we actually played it, or it was like a big raceway kind of thing that they had set up. But mo a lot of it is jungle. I mean, right. it's, a, it's a very peaceful country. As I understand, they don't even have an army. Yeah. And we were there, they were just swearing in this new uh, female president who looked like Fergie. Mm -hmm. One day I'm watching TV, I'm like, what the hell is Fergie like, you know? And it was like, yeah. oh my God, that's the, you know, so they got the hottie girl running the, uh, running the country and they don't yeah. have an army. So it's a good, good. place to go. So good. I highly recommend it, by the way. There you go. <laughs> looking for a good looking uh, president. Hey, everyone go become yeah, citizens go, go in Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So we got some fan questions that people sent in from Twitter and Megadeth. Mega death. Hey, sounds pretty cool, but uh, wasn't it a Senate bill or something? It was worded. It, it, well, it, well, here's what it was. When Dave was on the bus ride home after he got fired from Metallica, he was obviously had a lot on his mind. I'm sure, you know. And, uh, and he, <laughs> but one of the things that he said that he read was this. Uh, it was like a handbill thing that he had, and it was from Senator Alan Cranston, who was a California senator at that time. Uh -huh as I understand, and um, he was talking about nuclear disarmament, and he said the arsenals of Megadeth can't be rid, meaning there's so much nuclear power on the planet, we can't get rid of it, we can't even send it to space, we just can't get rid of it. So we basically have a destructive force on our own planet that we created that will basically kill us, and there's nothing we can do. So, so that was the impetus of the lyric that he wrote, which was Megadeth, I think, I think probably the first post-Metallica right. lyric that he wrote, and now... 
obviously the name, the of, our, name. of our little band we have here. Yeah. yeah. But another fan question is uh, now you guys got any influence like recently, like any upcoming bands, like, you know, because, you know, the music's always changing, you know, around You know, here. it's interesting with that because in the sort of mid to late 90s, we were, you know, it's, it, it's funny, thrash metal was done. I mean, it, it, the scene had really, after the Clash of the Titans tour we did in 91, the scene really got small quick. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that was just chase change, you know, I mean, the Seattle movement came, you know, and so MTV and, you know, things that were, you know, the media is very influential on people, right. you know, man, and a lot of people don't want to have to think about it. So they turn on TV, oh, I like this band Nirvana, and then they're off on that. Or they turn on the radio, they hear Pearl Jam, oh, we like that. Right. And so pretty, you know, pretty quickly the thrash metal thing really died down. The good thing about what we do, and, and all metal, is that it's always, it's you know, it, it always is an underground thing, man. We're, we're a strongly knit tribe here, you yeah. know, and they call it a cult, but it's, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> cult following, you know, but it, but we're a, we're a tightly knit bunch, you know, and, and, um, and so, you know, as we're in the late 90s, as all these new bands were coming out, Godsmack and, and various things, they had a new sound, and it was kind of hard to not be influenced by the things around you right. you know what i mean and because our influence is really you know all of us growing up in the in the thrash scene we own both punk rock records and heavy metal records and right. that's how we created thrash metal it's really go. a hybrid of the two you know right so it's kind of nice that now the tides have turned and thrash is big again <clears throat> because we can go back to remembering the things that especially 20th anniversary Rust in Peace thing where we're really taking a trip down memory lane with our right. fans anyway. We can really go back to what what inspired us to make this record. What were we listening to, what right. we were doing. And so I think if there's any influence, it's probably looking at our own lives and looking back at some of those things that influenced us from that day yeah. that made us be able to be here and here with you and yeah. all these years later. Good. And exactly, and that's kind of something that's good is like no matter what people are doing with the living, mm -hmm. is always look at you know when they first started and what inspired them to start that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you know even for me doing a show, I'm like you know I've been doing this for six years, 500 episodes later, been on a couple tours, and I think I'm done, right? And no. you're not bored yet. No, yeah, and yeah. it's like yeah. why? Well, because when I first started back when that first band was on the show, you know, so it's well. There's like a that. saying: if you want to uh, if you want to be inspired, don't just be inspired by your influences. Go back and listen to what influenced your influences. There you go. Nice, you like that, don't you? I know you guys do. Cool, so Megadeth, 2010, keep on going, right? Cool, yep, that's all we're doing, man. We're just awesome. going, and it's good, This, like I say, this whole year has just really been a good trip down memory lane with our fans, with everything that we're doing, big four shows, 20th anniversary, Rust in Peace, American Carnage, just yeah. on and on and on, so it's a, it's a good year. Good. You guys ever get tired of playing some of them old songs? No, no. I mean, you get on stage, man, and it's like you just you you come to life. You know what I mean? It's 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 just that and that moment right memories. yeah that moment right there. I mean, that's what we live for. You know, we spend sometimes 23 hours of the day occupying ourselves doing other things to really for that one hour that we're on stage. I mean, that's that's the whole reason that we're out here doing all this. Uh, and so that with that hour we're up there, man, you know. We that, that that's that's our time when we just get to be the four dudes up there playing our music. Nice. So before we close out, you want to say any message to the people that came out on this year's tour? <clears throat> well, hey, thank you for coming out, man. It's awesome. It's a great year for uh, everything in metal and everything in thrash metal. Thank you for all of the years. Much appreciated. Awesome, David Elfson from Megadeth here on the Vinnie Langdon Show. Gonna keep the show going. Thanks a lot. Cool, man. Nice right. meeting you. Thank you. Cool. Cool.